Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast on a happy hour Friday. We've got Adam Kaplan in the house today from the Inside the Birds podcast and InsideTheBirds.com. And he joins me right now as the Phils lead one nothing. by the way, in their home opener on 97.3 ESPN. Adam Kaplan, what's up, buddy? Good to talk to you, Mike, and the r- ridiculousness of the postponement yesterday. I, I just, just remember when they announced it, I'm like, wait a minute, the weather might change. This is not definite. And, and of course, it, it was good enough to play yesterday, but we digress. And we don't have that problem. In fact, we were talking about this on our show on Thursday morning, where the snow came out of the blue in 2013. That was the crazy Snow Angel game where the, the Eagles played the Lions and and I don't, I've never seen this before where snow was not on the forecast and just came in out of the blue. And I remember the Lions were not prepared for the snow that day. And the Eagles, uh, Roy, remember LaShawn McCoy was loving it, and uh, he had a huge game, and uh, that was the Snow Angel game when the players were going nuts after the game. They were loving it. Yeah, I know that uh, yesterday, 80 degrees and sunny, it's a horrible day to play baseball. But, uh, yes, as you mentioned, we digress. <laughs> uh, yes, a lot of conversation. You know, right before I got on the air today, they were talking uh, on the national show about the Eagles. And I know I want to talk some draft stuff with you. But one of the things I want to get your talk uh, thoughts on, on something that they said, you know, was that, uh, doesn't see, you know, that they didn't see the Eagles getting back to the Super Bowl. And it doesn't have to do with talent that it has to just be with the nature of how difficult it is to get back. If, if this team right now comes up short, is that more the reason for you, not talent, that it's just so difficult to get back two years in a row? Well, the history, first of all, Mike, for the runner-up to the, to the team that lost in the Super Bowl, historically they don't get back. Sometimes they don't get back ever. Or they don't get back for a while. Now, the great thing is, you know, the positive of everything is, Mike, this offense is going to be fantastic. As long as nobody gets hurt, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, Hurts, of course, if not the NFL's best offensive line, one of the top three. Now they have to figure out right guard. That, to me, is certainly an issue right now going forward. That That's something that they will stop by training camp, what that thing's going to look like. Could could be soft in the draft. Who knows whether it's Jurgens or somebody else, or a draftee or a veteran. They'll figure that out. But they've got two potential Hall of Fame candidates on their offensive line, they're still there. I mean, their offense is going to be fantastic. It's just the questions have to be solved in defense. Uh, we noted that we noted this uh, recently on our show. The Eagles will have a minimum of five new starters on defense. That's a lot. I mean, that's that's a that's a lot of change for a team that just got to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and one thing they had Herm Edwards on, and I thought it was interesting. We're going to get into the draft, and they asked him at number ten if Jalen Carter's there and Bajon Robinson's there. Who would he take? He said, "I have to go with the runner." Does that speaking from the coach, or, you know what I'm saying, with the coach rather than the runner? I work with uh, I work with Herm Edwards at ESPN for five and a half, four, four and a half, five and a half years, whatever it was. I know him pretty well. He wants to run the ball. I mean, come on, <laughs> it's, it's, it's this is the way Herm Edwards is. You know, he 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 doesn't want the quarterback to throw the football a lot. They want to run the football. Uh, look, we so what happened on our Thursday show is we came in with this concept of. Because everyone keeps asking about what's going to happen at 10. Are the Eagles going to trade out? Everybody seems to think the Eagles are going to trade out. And we kind of laugh. We're like, okay, well, who are, you, who are teams trading up for at number 10? That, that's, a, that's the bigger question. And that's why we did a mini mock draft on Thursday's show. And we'll, through our sourcing, through what the, the teams ahead of the Eagles think they need, we, we go over some of the players. Uh, the, 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 look, we're three weeks out. And we actually addressed this. We're going to address this with Greg Cosell a little bit on our shows next week because we do. We actually do. What do we do? We, we do. Oh, well, we do running backs. Yeah, we're going to do running backs with them. We're actually going to address the Eagles and Bijan Robinson number ten in terms of that question. Greg's got a great response, but we're going to save that for next week. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the reasons Herm said it, and this is interesting, is that he thinks having a running back like that would take less hits. For Jalen Hurts, a less propensity for him to carry the ball if they have a runner like Robinson. And I don't think the Eagles, you know, it's it's that weird dynamic. Do the Eagles want Hurts to not be the guy that he was? You know, they're paying him $50 million because of who he was. Do they not want him to be that guy? I don't see them changing the way that they use him. He, one of the reasons why they're so good, Mike, is the way that they structure their offense. It, the running game 
in a sense, he either goes through him or he's he's going to be their second leading rusher. If he's not their first, he'll be their, their second leading guy. Now, the Eagles, as we've talked about, the Eagles don't have a lead back. I know some fans don't think they need a lead back. That's fine. But the, the fact of the matter is when you look at it, teams have to run the football. The Eagles will run it. When they run it, it part of it's going to go through Hurts. That, that will not change because he's so dynamic with it. But it's not – see, the thing that – the one thing we saw this with Donovan McNabb over time, sure, you could, you could have design runs, but what you'd like him to do, and which he started doing last season a lot better, when it's not there, throw the ball away. You don't have to run every time. And he did less of that. That, that, that was good. But, of course, they, they also design a lot for him. Adam Kaplan, football at four. All right, let's take a look at some things in the draft. You mentioned will the Eagles – Everybody keeps asking, will they trade down from number 10? Will they stay there? Let's look inside the top 10 and see uh, some possibilities here. At number one, we have the Panthers who made the trade to get there. Now, there was some whispers that they would trade there and then move again, uh, but they have so many needs that uh, you would think that they'd need that quarterback at number one. Yeah, so the Panthers are going to take a quarterback. We know it's it's either going to be Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. That's That's pretty much a lock. So right after that, now they, their needs are quarterback. They need a they need really a young receiver. Talking to Panthers recently, they really think a lot of Adam Thielen. They think he's got two good years left in him. They want to see Terrace Marshall, who'd be a third-year receiver out of LSU. They want to see him more. Lavisca Chenault, who they required from the Jaguars last year, uh, they like him. They want to see him uh, be more of a factor. So they need pass rushers. They need a, a receiver, a quarterback, of course, and they're going to go quarterback now. Whoever the Panthers don't draft, that's who the Texans will take. So it's either going to be Stroud or Young. They need quarterback, center, wide receiver, defensive end. They need, like, three defensive ends. Their pass rushers is terrible. They need corners. Remember, Steven Nelson, of all people, he's on the final year of his two-year deal, so they need a corner. But the quarterbacks are top need. They'll do that. And then it, this is where it gets interesting because the Cardinals don't need a quarterback, Mike, at number three. They need pass rushers. They, they just don't have anyone left. J.J. Watt retired. Their number one need is a pass rusher. They need a center, a right tackle. A, a, they need corners in the worst way. Defensive linemen. They, they, uh, Gaddon probably will run a 34, like he did here in Philly. This is where the, the talk starts with Will Anderson. I, he's not an elite player, Mike, but he's a good pass rusher. They need pass rushers, and we're going to put him there with the Cardinals at number three. Yeah, the Cardinals, obviously, with John Gannon, a defensive-minded coach, you would imagine that Will Anderson, and maybe they could be the team that takes a Jalen card, but you would think they're going defense there. And then I think the ultimate wild card is the Colts because do they trade out of that spot to go up to try to get a quarterback? Do they just wait to see uh, what falls to them? Because you would think that there's going to be one of the quarterbacks uh, there for them. Obviously, if there's four, they have the choice of one, but do they have one that they like more than others? They also have some other needs. Yeah, so with the Panthers and Texans, see, what's interesting about the Texans is they, they have another pick later, and that pick is at number 12. Now, let's say hypothetically they trade with their division mate, the Colts, and the Colts get their quarterback, right? And the, the, the Texans trade down to four. Now you're talking about Will Levis and Richardson. Richardson a, is a total wild card, only one-year starter. Is the GM for the Texans, in this case Nick Casario, it really is – He's kind of struggled a little bit. He missed badly last year passing on Sauce Gardner and taking Derek Stingley, who will eventually be a good player. He's had a lot of injuries, but he's pretty talented. But he's not in Sauce Gardner's category. What happened last year is he drafted Stingley for scheme, for his own scheme, and now it, the defense has changed, of course, because they have a new head coach. So, And, it, and it's, it's, it's obviously D'Amico Ryans. So now if you're Casario, you have to get a quarterback. Are you going to wait till? Are you going to – flip-flop with the Colts there and hope that no one trades up with the Cardinals. I mean, it's – Will Levis is another guy that might drop a little bit. It Boy, the drop-off from the top two quarterbacks, Mike, to the next two is pretty significant. Obviously, Richardson's pretty gifted, but he's pretty raw and needs a lot of development. That's where, the, that's where I, I have the, the Colts here. We haven't taken a quarterback. Of course, it's three weeks away. We don't know exactly who that's going to be, but they have to get their quarterback – they're, they're really bad at corner. They're, they're probably the worst of the NFL cornerback. They need a D-tackle and a guard, but quarterback, it's going to be here. I'm keeping track. That's three quarterbacks you have in the yep. four, so uh, let's keep that in mind. Let's go to five, where you would think if Will Anderson is at three, 
Jalen Carter if he's a draftable player for Seattle. In other words, if he doesn't have a red flag uh, because of his off-the-field stuff, he would have to be in play here. Yeah, in fact, it's, it's with Will Anderson going off the board, I, they could probably use one more pass rusher. It's really hard when you're trying to assess the value here because the, the Seahawks have had a very good offseason. They got their – they got – Draymond Jones is terrific. He was the top pass rusher available in free agency, and they got him. They have Nwosu, who came out from the Chargers, who had a great season. They need D tackles here. Now, this is where it starts. The clock starts for Jalen Carter. The Seahawks have been had the willingness to draft players with, with character issues. They drafted Frank Clark. I know people had a lot of issues with them doing that. He had some significant off-the-field concerns when Seattle drafted him, but they still did it. They answered the bell for that one. I remember John Schneider, the GM, going on. He had to talk about it. He discussed why they did it. Turned out to be a good decision. Now, Jalen Carter has got obviously some significant concerns here. We're going to put Carter here because it's, a, it's their number one need by far. He's the best player in this draft, by, by the way. He's the number one player from teams I've talked with from tape study. The character, though, is a problem. But, again, the Seahawks have been willing to do it. If they're comfortable enough, he's going here at number five. All right. Uh, so that would keep uh, Carter away from Philadelphia potentially at number 10. At six, the Lions, I feel like, you know, this is a team that a lot of people like their roster enough now to call them a playoff team. And now they're at number six in the draft. So they can really get an impact player at this spot to help this team out. Yeah, I love the Lions. I'm, I'm already picking them. I, I love their odds. They, if, you like, if you're someone who likes to do future bets, the Lions are being picked by the, the books to win the division, but they're still in the plus category. Before they go minus, you should jump on them. They have a complete offense. The only thing they're missing really is a tight end. Remember they traded Hawkinson to the Vikings, which is so weird to have an interdivisional trade at the trade deadline, but they did that. They need, a, they need pass rushers. They need corners. We're going to take the best corner for this draft, Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon. He'll go here number six to the uh, line. All right, Gonzalez there. So that's a corner off the board. And then uh, the Raiders. And this is a team that signed Jimmy Garoppolo, so you would think that quarterback is probably off their list now. Yeah. But this is a team that obviously has a lot of issues as well. And, uh, you know, you have Christian Gonzalez going at six. What about the Raiders getting a corner? Yeah, and they're really bad at corner. They're, they're, I have them as – Second worst team in, in the NFL corner. They're really bad there. That's their number one need. Guard is a need. Right tackle is a need. Receiver depth is a need. Defensive tackle is a need in terms of upgrade. But corner is a need here. And Devin Weather, Witherspoon, who I know some teams have over Gonzalez. Witherspoon is super aggressive. He doesn't have the length of Gonzalez. He's not as he's just not as well built as Gonzalez, but he's more physical. He's a, and here's the thing, he could, as Greg Cosell told us recently on our show, he could play inside or outside, he could play slide, he could play outside. He would play outside. They already have their, the Raiders already have uh, their slot corner, who last year had it playing on the outside, and that is Nate Hobbs. So that would really help him. Witherspoon's the pick here for the Raiders at number seven. Yeah, uh, and then obviously right behind them at number eight is the Falcons, uh, this is a team that also has a lot of issues, a lot of holes, and they could go in any <laughs> a variety of directions at this spot. I would guess they, 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 I mean, they like Desmond Ritter, but I guess if there's a quarterback there that they like, they may, if it was one falls to them, they may have to decide there. But ultimately, for number eight in the Falcons, what do you like? Yeah, you know, they don't, it's funny, they don't need a running back, but because they have a couple guys, Tyler Algier, who was a fifth round of BYU, did a very good job for them at running back. They have Cordero Patterson, who who's an older player but could play running back. But man, I'm not going to put him here. But I just want to talk about Bijan Robinson because they are a run first offense. They don't want the quarterback to be a factor. They want to run it. And remember, Arthur Smith had Derrick Henry. Just keep that in mind. That would be this is this is where the the, the talk starts with Bijan Robinson, but. They need a corner. That Casey Hayward's an older corner at 33. They need pass rushers in the worst way. When I look at it here, I'm looking at a pass rusher at a corner, but they, they would be able to get a bookend corner here uh, for A.J. Terrell, and Joey Porter Jr. would be the pick as of now. Okay, so you just went corner, 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 bang, bang, bang. So that's three players that I would assume – 
that Philadelphia, you know, with uh, with with um, Bradbury and Slay, they probably would not place a, a you know be thinking about a ten. Agree or disagree? Well, when you look at the see, this is why uh, we we did this, Mike, because after Porter Jr., the cornerback group, the ne- it's the next tier. And it drops off. Cam Smith is the next guy, most likely from Carolina, South Carolina. Deontay Banks also should go in the first round. Rigo from Georgia will go late first, early second. Forbes of Mississippi State's really gifted, but he's 166. Hard to draft him early in the first round, so there's a drop off. Now, the guy I didn't mention, who, who has been in consideration, he, it starts in the top 10. The next best pass rusher is Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. To me, he could go as early. At six to the Lions, I, I if we had to do this over again, I probably would put Wilson somewhere with between six and eight. But it, the only reason why I went with the corners here is because the, there's a major drop off after Joey Porter Jr. So that's that's what we have there. Now we're at number nine with the Bears, who of course made the trade with the Panthers. All right, uh, let's get to the Bears because they made that trade with the Panthers, and that means they're down at nine. I have said many times here. They've got to take an offensive lineman. You you commit it to that quarterback. Now you got to block for him. So is it a home run for you, Adam, that it's Peter Skronsky or a Paris Johnson uh, or one of these offensive linemen? Yeah, I was told uh, the last couple of days that Paris Johnson. Yes, he played guard. He was he didn't he played poorly at guard a couple of years ago. So no team who was looking to start the guy should consider him at guard. He's a right or left tackle. You, the, the Bears could line up five offensive linemen now, but you're looking for an upgrade. It's Skronsky to me or Lucas Van Ness. The Bears have the NFL's worst pass rush. Van Ness is the best defensive lineman here. Uh, we're best, he's, he's got better versatility than Tyree Wilson. So to me, it's either Wilson, Van Ness, or Skronsky. I'm going to put I'm going to put Wilson here because they absolutely need pass rushers. We'll put Tyree Wilson here at number nine. And that puts Philadelphia there. Now, interesting. Like I'm going through your. Uh, board that you just went through. I remember three quarterbacks, one, two, three. That means a quarterback would be on the board here. Does that mean that Philadelphia's phone starts to ring? Well, see, we don't know how teams feel about Richardson. We 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 know they he's guy only started one year. Could be Levis. Yeah, Levis though's got some. He had his tape was not very good from Kentucky. The, the OC was fired. Rich Gangarello, former Eagles quarterbacks coach. Or whatever, whatever his and actually whatever his well, I don't know what his title was. That was a senior offensive assistant, something like that. But when you really look at it, Mike here, let's stay with the. They, remember, this is the pick from the Saints. The Eagles' needs are defensive end, defensive tackle, number three receiver, and safety. Um. And, 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 so, so the, to me, right now, if they stay there, Michael, be it, it's going to be Lucas Van Ness, who who we know visited. They they like this is a guy I know the Eagles like. I'm gonna I'm gonna give them Lucas Van Ness here if they don't trade out. So Van Ness right now you think is their favorite of the of the ends. I'm looking I'm looking at who's left. Remember I gave them I gave I put Tyree Wilson off the board uh, mm-hmm. right before them. I'm looking at my best available players for for pl- position of need. He's the best player and he fits because he's what we call a multi aligned defensive lineman. That's a, that's a scouting term. That means he could line up at DN, D tackle. You could stand him up. Now the funny thing is, is that he was not a full time starter for Iowa, but he's so gifted. The tape is so good. You love him. I, now, if you and I are running the show here, Brian Branch out of Alabama's consideration here. But I know it's not the way teams do it. They don't draft safeties early, but he's the best safety for this draft. He's going in the first round. It's an absolute discussion at number 10, but we're going to go with pass rushers first. I get it. Lucas Van Ness is the pick from Iowa. And you would say uh, B. John Robinson would not be in the discussion. Okay, so let me explain something to folks. We've talked about this for years with the Eagles. Keith Byers was the last technically a running back that they drafted in the first round in 1986, folks. He was really a fullback. The last true running back that they drafted was 40 years ago in the first round. Michael Haddix out of Mississippi State who struggled. Let's put it it mildly here. He struggled as a former first-round pick. So it's just not their history. We, you know, I put this out during the draft, actually before they picked. 
when I was hosting a show with Mosher, I said, I, I said to Jeff, he asked me, goes, who's going to be the pick? I said, I've been working this all day. This is the 17th draft, which is here. I said, I, I could turn out to be wrong. And people will probably skewer me for this, but I'm going to say Christian McCaffrey. Based on what I heard, that's going to be the Eagles' pick. That's who they like. They're actually going to break the mold, and we never really know for sure because they McCaffrey went way earlier to the Panthers. And what happened is the Eagles drafted Derek Barnett, who's still an Eagle, by the way. Yes, he is still an Eagle. He is part of uh, that rotation, I guess, right now that has Brandon Graham, Josh Sweat. I guess he would be the third guy, right? Well, he, he could do both. He's, he could be a stand-up pass rusher because Eagles run a hybrid scheme, and he could play with his hand down. Uh, look, he's a good run stopper. Uh, he plays with good technique, but we know it's just not. he's an average pass rusher. He's come back from a torn ACL, so who knows what they're going to get out of him. But uh, we, our understanding is there's been absolutely no talk about cutting him. He's, he's, it seems like, barring a change in heart, he's going to be the Eagle this season. All right, uh, Adam Kaplan, football at four. There you go. A look at the top ten and what could happen to get the Eagles at ten. Now, of course, we can discuss uh, as we move further, closer to the draft, uh, the possibility of them getting out of that ten pick. And don't forget, they also have pick number 30 and they do have pick 62 in round number two. We can investigate more on that as we get closer to Draft Day, and of course you can hear the draft right here on 97.3 ESPN Thursday, April 27th. Adam Kaplan, Football at Four from the Inside the Birds podcast. Listen to that, and it drops next week with a more look at the draft. You just mentioned Greg Cosell. They'll have plenty more on this draft class. Adam, enjoy the weekend, pal. Thank you, Mike. See ya.